Hello, folk. Welcome to another episode of Marriage Mondays with Nick Katrina Brunson. Glad to have you here tonight. Um, before we get started tonight, I just want to wish all the guys that's watching the video that have children Happy Father's Day. And today is actually celebrated uh, Juneteenth also. Well, yesterday. Uh, yesterday it was, but it's being observed, observed today. today. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. That's so, right. happy Juneteenth to those that, that apply to. We know who that is. Well, that's so, everybody. Yeah. So, we just want to thank y'all for showing up for us and, and and coming and see what we got to say tonight. But thus says the Lord, not what we say. <laughs> yes. And so, we are uh, on a mission, um, on assignment from our church ministry, Crown Kingdom Cultural Center. Um, there is a group page. We encourage you to join it. Um, our pastor is Bishop Finus Bush Jr. and his wife Denise Bush. So we encourage um, you to come see what we are doing as a church ministry um, on our church Facebook page just to see what's available, um, what information it can be useful to you. So what's on the page is for um, the public. You don't have to be a member of our church to join the page. Um, it just gives you access to content that we think is valuable to share with our church members. Um, and so this marriage ministry is uh, one of the ways that our church ministry reaches out to support families. So um, we always encourage you all to share. You guys do a wonderful job of sharing, um, reposting this so that we can reach people. And um, it's certainly not for our personal benefit as much as it is for the body of Christ. And to anybody who's interested in understanding um, how to increase their skills for maintaining or creating a, a happy and successful marriage, which is really peaceful, and healthy, a peaceful, healthy marriage. Mm -hmm. um, we are here to give you some tips to teach you some strategies uh, so that you can um, be successful in your marriage relationship. So we're bringing you godly principles, um, and we're also doing a job, the job of breaking down those concepts into examples and into steps so that you can implement them into your own relationship. We're just upping your game, giving you some skills. All right. So that's why we're the, the lady and the coach. Um, so we're here to coach you through through these things so that you can um, step up your game. Mm-hmm. All right, so we just want to say hello, Mama E, yes. and uh, I think Sheena's on tonight already. Mm -hmm. I just want to thank y'all for being on with us. Uh, we'll just give a few minutes for other people to show up, and and we'll get on with the with the topic of the night. I will say um, our church ministry also will post this same broadcast on Facebook. Um, I'm sorry on. Um, YouTube. YouTube. Thank you. I couldn't call mm -hmm. the call it, uh, so that it's easier to share sometimes from YouTube. Um, so we encourage you all to uh, watch it there as well. Uh, we encourage rewatching. Is <laughs> you know it's amazing what you can hear a second or third time that you listen to something, and the insight that that you may gain uh, from the repetition of hearing as faith comes by hearing, hearing by, hearing by the word of God. Mm -hmm. So. Um, we're founding what we're talking to you tonight in the Word of God. So we've got Latasha adding, uh, coming on in. Hi, Edwards. We appreciate you for joining us. Um, I'm not seeing everybody's names. I only see those three, but there's the numbers are a little more. So mm -hmm. if you're watching with us, thank you for joining us. Thank you for sharing. I see that Francine has shared. Francine and Charles, they're always on with us. Um, so we, we hope this lesson is helpful to you tonight. All right, with that said, let's get on into the lesson. Um, the topic, if, if you can see it, we, we can't see it, but we know it wrote down, is the I versus the we. And we know that really in a marriage, there's there's not much room for, for I when it comes to two people trying to be one. Um, but we do promote self, you know, goals in, within your marriage so you can be better for the marriage. But when you get more into what I want, Instead of what we need, right. you you run into some issues. Right. So we want to talk about that tonight. And that's where we're gonna wanna, where we're gonna basically bring our lesson from. Mm -hmm. You know, talking about you know you know getting rid of that I as much as you possibly can 
and be more of a we concept type of marriage. Right. <clears throat> so, um, where the basis of the, the lesson, the scriptural basis of the lesson comes from Genesis 2 and 24. Therefore, a man and woman shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. They shall become one flesh. And we just want to emphasize that one flesh because we've talked about leave and cleave, but that's we're really not getting to that. We're talking about becoming more of, of being more like one flesh. So how does this, when, when you talk about becoming one flesh, um, I think to start with a mindset. What do you, mm. what do you say? Um, you mean as far as marriage? Yeah, or? when when you're talking about being becoming one in marriage. Um, well, I think it starts with saying I do. Okay. Well, I can agree with that. Okay. And then you have to, that that mind has to be uh, more of what we're going to accomplish than what more than what I'm accomplished in this marriage. Because it's not about, about you when it comes to this marriage. It's about us. It, it is, but we have to offer some balance to that conversation, though. Mm -hmm. Because we have to be very careful in saying that it's not about I, but the truth is, I is encompassed within we. Right. Because what you don't want to do is lose your own um, purpose and identity because they are they become connected when you marry. Right. They become connected. The two become one. That doesn't mean that you um, are not who you used to be. It means that who you are when you get married evolves through the uh, course of the marriage. I'm trying to be careful about what right. I'm saying cause, because what happens, especially to a lot of women, is they get lost in the marriage and then all they mm -hmm. all they are is whatever they're... They've gotten so into uh, their husband and their husband's identity that they forget that your husband is not a single person. Your husband is married and he's married to you. And your presence as part of the marriage is you have to bring all of yourself to that marriage, which causes the evolution of both people in that process of two becoming one. Right. And so we want to make sure to be clear that we are not saying that uh, because sometimes it is um, implied. What's heard, what's heard. Yeah. That's exactly right. Because there's so much of an implication, especially um, in in the church in general. Uh, women very often have come to understand erroneously that their identity doesn't matter anymore. That I just do whatever my husband already had going. I'm just going to help with that and be his help me. Mm -hmm. And see, that gets mis misconstrued. You are supposed to be as help me. That is your assignment. But nowhere in that assignment does it say that you become obsolete. Right. You don't dissolve yourself in another person or another human. You you keep the essence and the, the substance of who you are when you get married. But then there has to be an agreement to become the we. And, you right. know, a lot of, and, and talking about this in, in the sports world, you know, there are T-shirts that are made I versus we. When you want to do things on your own, on your own, and you're talking about a team concept, you're going to mess things up because there's a plan the team has to follow in order to be successful. And if you go do your own thing, then you're messing up what the team concept is, what you've been trained to do. Right. And now, now your 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 relationship could be at a disadvantage if you're not using the we concept. And, you know, just like my wife said, you shouldn't just think about as a, a even even some men may do that now, you know, dissolve themselves and who their who their woman is. That's that's no way to, to live a life. It's out of balance. Yeah, you don't it's do that. It's out of balance. Yeah. Right. You have to find a way for the two of you to work together so that um, you accomplish all that both of you are meant to be. Right. And if you could accomplish everything you want to accomplish um, without... Uh, a wife's involvement then what's the purpose in you getting married mm -hmm. we're supposed to work together so that the outcome of our lives are the result of our union together and right. so what I'm able to do now I, is empowered by what because the strength of us together what you're able to do now is empowered by the strength of us together we can accomplish more together you know, the math, the way God does math is totally different from the way 
<laughs> we do, you know, we're so much stronger, the two of us together, what we can accomplish together is so much more than what we can accomplish alone. And so to only focus on um, one person and to not have the strength of the other person make the other person's accomplishments better, make the other person stronger, that's a disservice. Bring all of yourself into the marriage relationship and make those considerations for how you move about the world and the decisions you make um, for each person. Make those decisions together. Even if they are, uh, for example, um, we've talked about you being in school. Well, your going to school was a decision we made for you. Right. It was a desire you had, something you expressed, something that needed to happen. And so it wasn't that you just decided, uh, what's that word I always use, unilaterally, mm -hmm. that you were going to go to school and then I just have to make the adjustments. That's that's single thinking. That's single-minded thinking. Mm -hmm. Even in your thinking about how uh, you expect for you to reach your personal goals, they still have to be considered within the context of the marriage. Right. And so that's really the premise behind the thinking of I versus we. Don't lose yourself. Still maximize who you are, but it should be that much stronger because there's two of you working together. And when you can support one another, it's amazing what you can do when you don't have to worry about being in contention with your spouse as you're progressing professionally or as you're reaching uh, financial goals or as you're reaching... Um, you know, as you're following your dreams in life, when you have your partner working with you, as opposed to your partner um, resenting right. the moves that you want to make, mm -hmm. that's not a, a we mindset. Right. And so when you get into this this thing, and I can see where Latasha put it, it's um, don't be single minded thinking. Mm -hmm. When you become single minded thinking in a marriage relationship. It's a couple things happening. We're going to talk about those. Uh, one thing that happens is you become very selfish in your operation yeah. with your spouse. Now, what can that create? If I became, just, just me thinking, if I became selfish in the way that I operated with me and Trina, it will create some animosity. There will be fireworks displayed amongst mm -hmm. us because if she's in for we and I am in for just me and and my wife is not the kind of woman to just sit back and, and take it. We in for some some fireworks. We we may not last long. And if I stay on that single minded thinking, and then she's like, "Well, you just not gonna treat me like that." We probably gonna be better off by ourselves. If if I'm just stuck there and she's and, she, and she's fighting for something that I don't want, after a while she's gonna get what tired of fighting for. It. Mm -hmm. And then she's gonna be like, "Well, you do what you gotta do." I I think that's what may happen. I don't know well, how she operates. It that. becomes dangerous as well when someone is not outspoken about it. Mm -hmm. It's almost, to me, more uh, toxic and more lethal when you have a spouse who doesn't speak up when they feel that their spouse has left them out in their consideration for the next move. Right. And so when that spouse just sits back and is silently resentful or silently frustrated uh, silently feeling overlooked and you're not able to be true to um, you. It's like, I guess the word I'm thinking is um, like emotional honesty or having that level of intimacy to where you can put your emotions out there with your spouse, with honesty, with openness, with vulnerability that you can say, well, this is how I feel about it. And, or, or I feel like you didn't consider me in that, you know, can we? I, I would like to be a part of that process so we can work it out for both of us. Because if your spouse is making decisions and you're not being considered in those decisions, that's, that's foundation shaking. Right. And when someone sits back and continues to feel that way and does not express those emotions, that silent resentment begins to be harbored and it festers it and it becomes cancerous mm -hmm. to, the, to the marriage. And you you talking about an explosion? Yeah, it erodes that bond that you have. It it tears it away piece by piece by piece. 
And after a while, there's nothing left to grab a hold to. Mm -hmm. And then that's when, they're like she was just saying, that explosion happens. And I think that's where the marriage skills come in. Right. Because when you feel, uh, you know, um, uh, in a way that's in opposition to decisions that your spouse is making or to something your spouse is planning mm -hmm. and you have an opposing thought, it takes skills if you don't. Uh, um, naturally, and I think most people don't naturally, but some do, know how to address that conflict. Right. And how to resolve that conflict without it becoming something um, loud and dangerous and, <laughs> you know, a, a bad argument or a fight. Yeah, and that's, but, that's fear. When you don't want to mm -hmm. con confront that head on uh, to that, that point, that's, that's fear. You're operating out of fear when you don't want to bring that up because you're thinking of those things my wife just mentioned. You are afraid to com confront that person. Right. Confrontation ain't always a bad thing. When you have skills of how to do it. Absolutely. So, you know, because God didn't give you a spirit of fear. He gave you a spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. And that's how you got to operate and understand. Yeah. That's how if you got a spouse that's also understanding how the spirituality works, they will understand where you're coming from. And sometimes you can use those scriptures to start off your, your conversation if you don't. Not sure how it's going to turn out, but you don't need to operate out of fear. That's not going to get the relationship to the next level of development. Yeah, which is what, which is where you need skills. Right. If you recognize that you want to say something and you don't know how to say it well, if you don't know how to say it without yelling or lashing out, you, you need to gain some skills in that area. You need to seek how can you communicate something to your spouse, you know, without your emotions leading. And um, I just see somebody typed in exactly what I'm saying. You have to listen to what I'm thinking is that you do have to listen to the Holy Spirit, which means you got to go internal first. You're going to have to pray internal, meaning God and you, mm -hmm. you know, as a child of God, you have access to, to God and you. And so that's when you take the time to um, pray. You take the time to uh, be open and vulnerable with with God and ask for guidance from the Holy Spirit and what your next steps are. Seek out information to help you understand how to go about expressing those uh, feelings and emotions. Sometimes it's about the timing yeah. that you approach your spouse with it. Um, and sometimes it's about using some strategies. You know, even like in psychology, they teach the sandwich method. <laughs> you know, you got something, good. you know, start out with something good with a compliment. Mm -hmm. And in the middle, you put the meat of what you really want to want to say and address. And you close it out with the compliment. That's a skill. That's a strategy that, that you can learn to help you um, in order to communicate to your spouse something that might be um, not taken well. Um, take it. We were taught in, um, uh, I guess, therapists counseling to uh, commune, to mm -hmm. resolve those conflicts over communion, to sit down and commune together. It keeps you mindful that um, what you're doing, you're doing in the presence of God and you're reminded of the sacrifice um, of Christ and that you have access to, um, to the Holy Spirit and to Jesus to empower you for those challenges that you're facing. Um, you know, being physically touching, mm -hmm. you know, holding hands and having those type, that type of discussion, looking at each other, um, you know, sitting in together in an uninterrupted space um, and time. So you're both focused and ready. There are a lot of strategies you can use to have some hard conversations. Right. But you have to have those hard conversations. Mm -hmm. Running from them is not going to strengthen your marriage. Um, being quiet when you have um, an issue that you need to uh, discuss with your spouse, that's not healthy. Being quiet does not mean that you're pursuing peace all the time. Sometimes you do just need to kind of shut up and be quiet. Mm -hmm. But it takes the um, you getting some skills to understand um, also and to be led by the Holy Spirit so that you know when is it time to be quiet, when is it time for you to speak up, how do I speak up. So that's the advantage we have as Christians is we do have access to the Holy Spirit. We always have the option to pray and to listen and hear from God, to go to God's word. Um, and we find out that, you know, we attract, uh, we use the, um, what's that scripture where it talks about um, sweet words. I, hate, I can't think of the scripture. 
<laughs> to where, you know, your soft words turn away wrath. Um, find biblical concepts, biblical principles that will support your actions. So you're not just doing what you feel. You're doing what has been proven. You're following a way that is righteous. God's ways are always better than our ways. And God stands behind his ways and his strategies. But you have to get in line with what God has in place. You know, mm -hmm. being disrespectful in your expression of, of, you know, feeling overlooked or your expression of feeling um, like the decision that's being made is not a good one. Being disrespectful is not going to get you the outcome. God is not going to back that up. He is not going to back up that action because you are required to respect your husband. Husbands, you're required to love your wife. So when you come to your wife and you barking and uh, giving out orders and there's no love in it, God don't back that up. That's a problem. It's a problem. Mm -hmm. You are obligated to love your wife and to address her as such. And wives are obligated to give respect in your when you're communicating with your husband. You don't have the freedom just to say and do what you feel. Being angry doesn't give you the right to be disrespectful to your husband. And when you the information that you just mentioned to the people is called operating in oneness. Mm -hmm. When you're able to do all of that, when you're able to operate in body, mind, soul, and spirit that reflects something of God and, and all the intentions are reflected a reflection of God who who God is in your life, uh that's operating in oneness. So when you operate in this oneness, a lot of stuff that that could be a problem for the marriage, you know how to work it out. I mean you you figure out how to work it out. Mm -hmm. Everybody's not gonna do it the same way. Right. But the way you you can learn to do it is where it's gonna make your marriage better. We don't we we don't uh, talk about one way to do the marriage relationship. We we don't come to you with that one single what they call a magic bullet that a, that's a cure off for marriage. It's, it doesn't work that way. You got to figure out what works for y'all. But by operating in oneness, you can get there as a married couple. Mm -hmm. And hopefully one day your marriage can be an example to to somebody too. Right. Um, and I was just thinking about marriages and you know how some people operate in their marriages. Um, and I had to, and I went back and I was thinking about, you know, the examples of marriages that I've had in my, in my life. You know, I've thought about my dad and my stepmother, my, 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 my godparents and, and everybody. And then I thought about them, my, my grandparents on my, my mother's side and how that marriage was. And they operated in a way that made the family seem like it was functioning right, but they were never that I, I can remember, they never slept in the same bedroom. And it's, mm -hmm. I, I, that was just kind of odd to me that the marriage seemed good from what I knew marriages to be, but they never slept in the same bedroom. So you're talking about looking back as an adult. You're just looking you back as an adult, yeah. You thought it was a, a healthy marriage, family relationship. Yeah. But then when you look back, and you realize they never slept in the same bed. Yeah, that, that's a little. That was a little different for me. Yeah, and you know, I started, you know, researching it and looking at, you know, is this something that really, you know, people practice? Is this something that they oh, do? Oh yeah. Oh so yeah. So I, I was, you know, I was kind of floored by that. But you know, that's that was the way that they operated. Don't know really why they did it like that. And maybe it's something I got to talk to my uncles about to see what actually may have happened to make them want to be in different bedrooms. If they know, they might not ever know. That's true too. So, you know, that that was surprising to me to just go back and just look at how those those marriages were. And none of them are the same. Almost every marriage I've seen, none of them are, there's no identical. There are some principles that, that are the same, but as far as how they function, they're, they're not the same. So, mm -hmm. Your operation of oneness may not look like somebody else's operation of oneness. And I'm not saying what my grandparents did was right, but they had a reason for doing it. We guess. We guess. I don't know. Well, they had to. They did mm. it for that long. The question is, was it out of uh, selfishness? Was it out of unforgiveness? Was it out of agreement? Was it based upon how the house was set up? Mm. You know, you, I, I don't know. We might not ever know. But I will tell you, I, that's not the first couple I've ever heard of that lives like that. 
Yeah, I know one thing that, well, we could talk about one thing that I'm pretty sure. No, never mind. We're not going to go there. <laughs> I have no idea what you're trying to no, say. I'm not going to go there. But, I mean, I've heard of couples living under the same roof and living, um, kind of basically leading separate lives. Yeah. That's... Even though, and not just the bedroom, but in general, they just lead separate lives, even though they're living under the same roof. And I, to, that makes me think that that has to come out of a mindset of I. Because Definitely. even even if there was, just say there was some kind of a medical reason that you had to be in separate rooms, something legitimate. Like right. even now, I know some people, if they have um, like radiation therapy or something, you can't right. have somebody sleeping next to you or even uh, chemo. That right. can be an issue as well. So there may be legitimate reasons that are based upon what's better for us as a family that we might need to be in separate rooms right. at some point. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we're certainly not not judging from that. Um, but I also am sure that I've known of people who have just made that decision that they can't get along. So instead of um, being separated as the world see it sees it, just inside the home, they're just going to do what, what pleases them and not try to work through the problems that they're having snoring being a reason for sleep see could be that could have been <laughs> you sure don't have much to say do you i tell you there is a grace that exists for being married to a um top top rate snorer there's a grace that god has so if you don't have that grace i encourage you to um pursue it it, it does exist I, I can assure you that grace exists well so, done. It could. God's grace is sufficient. It is. That's the scripture we keep at the forefront around here is that God's grace is sufficient. But even to uh, Charles, um, Brother Charles' point, there are things you can do to stay in the bed with that person if they do snore. You know. Do tell. You know, ear, ear plugs. You know, if you got a, one of those CPAP machines, use it. Mm, that's yeah. a great idea. So, you know, there are things that can be done to stand mm -hmm. in bed with a snore. Okay. So we we're not we're not wanna yeah, that's right. That's right, Sister Roberts. Earplugs are available too. Even when that CPAP machine right there on the uh, nightstand. Well unplugged and unused. I'm just saying. We're just saying why people have a tendency and I you know, just my understanding, I'm just voicing my opinion to the to the people on Facebook about mm -hmm. You know about my grandparents and what I experienced, so you know. So maybe that was that could have been an issue with them too. We'll never know, and it's okay. Um, yes, brother Charles, there's a grace for going to sleep fast. Yeah, it is. I'm a witness. Mm -hmm. I'm Hallelujah. A witness. Yep, go to sleep first and go to sleep fast. Mm -hmm. That works too. But as long as you're in the same spot, it works most times. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people, when it's really bad, you just got to get up and go find your own space. So, we got anything else to say about I and we, I versus we? Well, before I we don't close out we, tonight. I think we need I think we close it out. We talked we? about every point on there. Yes, we did. In our conversation. No, look at number two. Mm-hmm. Because you talked about how some people were being, how they're emotionally disconnected from, from, from each other. And you got to be. Okay. Yeah. We basically talked about everything on there. Okay. What about number five? Okay. I think that's the point it. we need to bring out. We. Okay, you can discuss it. We. In that topic. Okay. We can discuss it. Go okay. ahead. Okay. So another point that we think is important is that when you um, have a mindset of I more so than we, you leave out the other person's perspective. When you omit your spouse's perspective, then that takes away the strength of the two of you working together versus you individually. Because mm -hmm. if you were single, you know, you might have lots of thoughts and ideas that come to you as an individual. But when you share that with your uh, spouse, it's always going to be better and stronger from the two of you working together. But if you omit to include your spouse in these things, then you have omitted your spouse's perspective, which sometimes can keep you out of trouble 
you know, one spouse can foresee danger more so than the other, or they can foresee um, decisions that need to be made to make things stronger or to be proactive um, or to, to network, to make connections. You just have, you get a chance to factor in what the other spouse brings into the picture. Right. Don't leave out the other spouse's perspective. That's exactly and because right. everybody bring quality to the relationship. If you are, if you are we first, you're gonna bring quality to what we can do better. Mm -hmm. So you know, admitting or just be like, well, that's don't make no sense. That's stupid. I don't even know why we bring this up. That's not the kind of words you want to say. You want to take everything into consideration. Now, whether you agree with it or not, that's something different. But you need to take it into consideration as a valid point because just omitting it and making it sound like it doesn't have any validity that, that's making another person feel like they're not a part of this relationship well the, just the process of being inclusive makes the marriage relationship stronger even if the ideas end up being maybe even what the first spouse had in mind um and maybe this the spouse didn't have a lot to add to it just the process of including your spouse makes your relationship stronger okay yeah all right two heads are better than one i like that stronger together Absolutely. that's what we are better together okay. we are stronger and better together all the time all right stay reminded of that well, that will be the end of this session tonight. Um, you got any closing words? Um, I don't think so. All right. Well, at this point, we want to say happy Juneteenth and happy belated Father Day if you were not told as a father. And we just want to say thank y'all for joining us tonight. We appreciate your attention and attendance from the lady and the coach. We love y'all. Good night.